Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. Got another television share review. This one I've been sitting on for a little while because it struck me as a show that should definitely be talked about in October. Uh, it's in its, thir its third episode just aired. Uh, fourth one is coming up next week. It's called Scream Queens, and it is incredibly ridiculous in all the best ways. It deals with the silly horror movie tropes. It deals with um, absolutely ridiculous writing done on purpose, which is a big difference. A and the characters are such fantastic examples of pure stereotypes and characters that get used again and again and again without thought. The plot of Scream Queen starts in 1995 when a pledge of sorority Kappa Kappa Tau dies while giving birth in a bathtub at a sorority party. That death is covered up and 20 years later at the same sorority house there's a new class of pledges coming in and needless to say people start dying. The show is created by Ryan Murphy, uh, who's also the mind behind uh, shows like Glee, and uh, probably much more in line with what one would expect for Scream Queens, American Horror Story. So you know he's got a track record. He knows what he's doing when it comes to these shows. Uh, he's got plans for multiple seasons of this, but we'll talk about that later. This is a slasher film, this is a um, murder mystery, this, this is a whole lot of fun. Uh, it is satire, it is uh, comedy, it, it is farce, it, it is, like I said, absolutely ridiculous in all the best ways. I have laughed more watching this show than I have watching most of the sitcoms uh, that I've seen in the past couple of years. It's done that well. The decisions the characters make are absolutely ridiculous, like the ones we complain about in a whole lot of movies. Hey, why did you do that? That's such a ridiculous idea. Every now and then a character will ask another character why they did that. And the answer is, well, that's just what we do around here. And that's the conceit of the entire show is that all of this, all of these bad decisions, the fact that no one is making a really big deal about these murders that is going on, the fact that the, the, the coroner's office declared a suicide, the death of a character who had his throat slit, no one is making a big deal about this. And any time anyone starts to, they're derailed and deflected, and it's just such an amazing example of how you can make fun of bad writing with good writing and good acting. Uh, the cast is really a big part of what makes this work. Uh, it's got uh, Emma Roberts in it in a character uh, very similar to the one she played when she first showed up on American Horror Story, the completely spoiled brat. Uh, who is so incredibly self-centered that, that her biggest worry about, uh, you know, people dying around her is that now she doesn't have anyone to pay attention to her anymore. A and Emma Roberts plays it so well. It's such a despicable character, and she just embodies it fully. And you hate this character. She does this so well. It's got Skylar Samuels in it as the uh, prototypical good girl who, who's come to uh, this sorority, who's, who's the only one that seems actually concerned about what's going on and figuring it out and trying to help people. But it's still not that... They're not going to the police. They, they've talked themselves out of going to the police. So it's that sort of uh, self-contained ridiculousness. 
Uh, and, and Skylar Samuels plays it very well. She's been on a whole bunch of shows uh, before. Uh, she's one of those people that I recognized but didn't realize where I recognized her for until I hit the Internet Movie Database. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, she's in all of that stuff. Uh, and she brings a uh, nice, fresh, happy vibe to all this death and destruction that goes on. Uh, it's got Leah Michelle in it as, as a very... Uh, very questionable new pledge. A little weird, a little morbid, a little obsessed with death and has some other issues going on. Uh, and Leah Michelle is best known to everyone uh, from Glee. So this is, again, a completely different uh, style and part for her. Uh, Glenn Powell, who, who's done a bunch of movies and a uh, few TV guest appearances, some video game work... He plays what may be one of the best examples of the dumb frat boy uh, who is self-involved and, uh, again, uh, ostensibly dating Emma Roberts' character uh, and the interactions between the two of them, these two incredibly narcissistic people bantering back and forth uh, is just perfect entertainment. Uh there's Abigail Breslin is in it as another one of the sorority sisters. Um, seeing her again play what is definitely a despicable character is playing against the uh, normal type one uh, thinks of when you think Abigail Breslin. Uh, but above everyone else in this uh, in this show is uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, the scream queen herself, Jamie Lee Curtis plays the dean of the university, and she gets the best scenery-chewing monologues that I have seen in a long time. It's over-the-top, it's fun, it's it's on the gory side for regular TV, um, and, and if you are a fan of horror... If you are a uh, one of those people who, who uh, picks at the bad horror movies and the bad horror TV shows for the stupid things the characters do, um, this is a show where that's what it's all about. It's all about making fun of all of that ridiculous stuff. And they are doing it so well in this show. Uh, I can't wait to see uh, where they go with it. It's a lot of fun. I'm expecting by the time they hit episode 13, I'll be a little tired of it. Uh, because, again, it, it is very uh, much based on these horror tropes, based on these repeated um, bad bits of writing that go on. They're strung together in very good ways, uh, and they're poking fun at them in very creative ways in cases, including an entire uh, scene done via text message back and forth between the main killer and his victim, which was just absolutely hilarious once. If you do that again, it's not funny. And that's what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned they will run out of ways to make fun of this stuff that doesn't start getting repetitive. And that's why this is one of those series I don't really want to see a second season of. Unless they completely impress me in some way, shape, or form by the end of this season, this is a one-shot thing. And it should be a one-shot thing. So, we'll see where it goes. I am thoroughly entertained right now, uh, and uh, you can catch all the episodes uh, out there. Uh, they're on Hulu. Uh, I believe they're on Fox's website. Uh, definitely give it a chance. Catch some highlight videos of one or two of Jamie Lee Curtis's scenes. They are fantastic. They are. Uh, she is wonderful uh, as always, but the. Uh, this show is definitely one for the uh, one for the books for making fun of everything that makes bad horror bad so bad that we watch it and laugh so that's it for today i uh, hope your october's going well so far uh if you liked what you uh, saw 
hit the like button down below. If you want to be notified whenever a new one of these comes out, subscribe down below, and you can have those subscriptions sent right to your email if you hit the gear and check that off. And if you uh, know anyone else that wants to come along on this journey, we've got some very interesting seasonal spooky things coming up soon. Uh, share this with them, let them know about it, and if you've seen uh, Scream Queens or any other shows you want to talk about, or any other anything you want to talk about, uh, comment down below and uh, let me know. We'll, uh, we'll start up a conversation about all the crazy bad horror stuff that we're all going to be subjected to this month. Again, I'm Kier. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and I'll uh, guess I'll see you tomorrow.